Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen and today as I'm sitting here we are a few days away from the US presidential election. Uh, by the time this goes up, I don't know, maybe the election will be over, maybe you'll find out who the president is, maybe it'll be a few days before, I don't know, we, were gonna, we will find out. But uh, I, I thought this video came at the request of one of our viewers, so uh, they had asked to please share some information about what the situation is for US citizens who wish to move abroad. And it may just be, uh, for a lot of people, you know, Biden or Trump, that, you know, the situation in the U.S. means you want to move abroad. You say, hey, listen, you know, I'm not really so keen on this. Maybe you've been feeling that since long ago. That's entirely possible. The bottom line is that the U.S. has a very specific uh, set of rules, which is citizenship-based taxation. Essentially, no other place in the world has it. And they wanted to understand what the consequences were for them if they were to do that. And so I'm making that video specifically for them, but hopefully there's going to be a lot of other people who we're going to serve. Before we dive into that, and I'm going to cover all the details with you, please click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, stick around to the end. I'm going to have lots of other interesting things, uh, or kind of uh, all the details of this to share with you. If you're interested in, you know, residencies, citizenships, moving abroad, getting other options, uh, international tax planning, asset protection, offshore banking, international companies, etc. Reach out to us. You can check out our website, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com, or you can book a call with me personally, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. There is a link below. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, let's say that you're an American and you decide, hey, I want to move abroad. In most parts of the world, when you move abroad, when you shift your residency, your taxation is based on... Uh, uh, taxation is based on residency, and residency is basically based on where you live. In the case of the U.S., uh, taxation for a U.S. citizen is based on their citizenship. So it doesn't matter where you live in the world. It doesn't matter how much you sever your ties with the U.S. So long as you are a U.S. citizen, you are taxable on your full worldwide income in the U.S., okay? Now, this has a few different consequences to it. First of all, it means that you would need to continue filing U.S. tax returns, even if you live abroad, which means you may be filing tax returns in multiple countries. So, for instance, whether you move to Canada or you move to Panama, you have to deal with the local tax rules, plus you have to deal with U.S. tax rules. Okay, so this is uh, a separation of, that is different from most other places. Most of the time, you wouldn't normally have to do that if you were from any other country. So it's a little bit of a pain. That being said, you know, there's going to be some pros that come with it, which we'll get into in just a second. All right, so that's the first thing. This Not only do you have to file, but you're going to have to comply with all the rules. What does this mean? If you own foreign companies, those foreign companies are then going to be subject to uh, the same set of tax rules as though you were a U.S., as though you were living in the U.S., okay? So, you know, keep that in mind. It makes it a little bit more complicated, more difficult. There are some things that will help you deal with this, okay? In particular, two key things that you uh, may wish to deal with. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, you go in, let's say that you form, uh, set up a bank account, right? So for instance, I'm sitting here in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, uh, I have a bank account. Of course, you have to have one basically to have residency here and you have to have a certain amount of money in it and things like this. Uh, well, if you're in that situation, uh, if you were, uh, just coming and living in Bulgaria as someone from anywhere else, then you typically wouldn't have to report that bank account, right? It's just, it's a Bulgarian asset, that's that. Uh, but there's FBAR, Foreign Bank Account Reporting in the U.S., so, you know, your bank account, which is now local to you, is foreign to the U.S., so you have to report it as part of your filings, and there's really bad consequences if you don't. So, uh, provided you exceed the threshold that you are required to report it, uh, that would be a thing that you want to make sure that you're definitely doing. Okay. What's the good side? Well, there's two good sides. First of all, there is something called the foreign earned income exclusion, okay? How does this work? What this means is, uh, we're gonna slightly simplify it here because it's not a video on the foreign earned income exclusion, but basically if you spend a certain amount of time outside of the US each year, approximately 330 days, uh, you can qualify for uh, approximately $100,000 of earned income tax-free, okay? So that's pretty good in this way. A lot of countries make it kind of difficult to be uh, a digital nomad who bounces from place to place and is resident nowhere. In the case of the U.S., so long as you're not in the U.S., you could be kind of resident nowhere and you could still take advantage of that. So it's 100,000 inflation adjusted for a few years back and so, you know, it's 100 and 
I don't know, whatever. Uh, it will be this year, you know, 103,000 or something like that. But anyway, uh, there's also potentially a housing allowance you can take advantage of, which can potentially get you up to 150,000. It's a little bit more complicated for that, but potentially you can take advantage of this a uh, little over $100,000. And if you have, say, two people, you know, across a family, okay, that's, you know, a little bit more money. So potentially something helpful. The second thing that they do to kind of make it a little bit easier is uh, you in the U.S. can get uh, tax credits for uh, taxes paid abroad. So let's say that you move to Sweden and Sweden has a higher tax rate than the U.S. All right, you pay your Swedish tax. You can get a tax credit for that and not have to pay any taxes in the U.S. It means that you're going to always end up paying the higher of the two taxes, but at least it means you don't get double taxed. So that's something else that's uh, fairly useful. Those are kind of like the key things to be aware of is that, okay, you move abroad, you have your U.S. Uh, uh, citizenship, no matter where you make the money, whether it's from a U.S. company or a foreign company, whether it's from your own company or somebody else's, whether you're sitting there doing this, you know, mowing lawns somewhere or whether you're doing it on the internet, you're taxable on your worldwide income. You do have these exceptions that can protect you from that to some extent. It does mean that you're going to have uh, to do continual filing for your whole life, so long as you have that citizenship, and you're going to have to follow all the rules associated with it. The one thing that you can do, which you should be aware of, which can kind of get you out of the you know, massive U.S. tax net is if you move to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, as a uh, territory of the U.S., has special treatment with the IRS and can allow you to get to very, very close to zero tax, depending on the scenario. Not for everybody, but if your income is the right type of income, you can more or less wipe out your tax if you're willing to be a bona fide resident there, meaning you're going to go and live there for, uh, uh, for basically half the year. Pretty... Uh, pretty good deal if Puerto Rico is a place that you think, hey, it's good enough that you want to live and provided that, you know, there's a, there's that benefit. Anyway, that's kind of how it works. It's, uh, it's not for everybody. Obviously, it only affects Americans, fortunately. We'll see if other countries bring it in. Hopefully not. And uh, yeah, anyway, if you have questions about it, please either reach out to me. Again, you can book a call, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer, or you can put comments below. You can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. You can uh, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like the video, click the like button, and uh, that really helps us out. Share it with your friends. I'm going to see you guys on the next video.